Hi there. It's Saturday, February 16th. The place, right here, Daytona International Speedway. It's the day before the big one with the Grand National cars. It's the Permatex race. In this one, they feature the NASCAR late model sportsman cars. Now, for the most part, these are the guys that are on their way up, trying to get into the Grand National Division. And one way or another, they're going to do it. Every year, this show has more excitement than a Barnum and Bailey three-ring circus. I think you'll find it that way today. The Permatex race is another highlight of Speed Week, being staged the day before the Daytona 500. In it, they feature the NASCAR late model sportsman cars. They're a little less sophisticated car than a Grand National racer, but when it comes to action, they take a back seat to no one. Many Grand National drivers compete in it, like Donnie Allison. He has the pole position. L.D. Ottinger starts alongside in car number two. In the second row, it's 11, Jack Ingram, and the double-O car driven by Wayne Andrews. Lenny Pond in the 0-1 shares the third row with veteran Bobby Allison driving the Chevy number 12. 44 cars come down off the high bank fourth turn and onto the tri oval to meet the green flag, and another Permatex 300 is underway. Ottinger in car two grabs the lead in turn one when Donnie Allison develops electrical trouble right at the flag. On the back shoot, Bobby Allison buries his foot in the Coke machine to hurl his Chevy past Ottinger and into the lead. First lap, Allison is the leader, but Ottinger wheels his Chevy in close to challenge. Jack Ingram in car 11 is running third, and suddenly a seven-car draft is developing on the high bank. and Bobby Allison leads the Daytona Express. Allison, Ottinger, Ingram, and Pond, they're glued together and flying. The battle is on for the third place with Jack Ingram in 11 and Lenny Pond in the 0-1. whips Ingram on the top of the fourth turn and takes a secure hold on the third spot as all cars rocket onto the trial. That was a bad one. Jimmy Mean blew his Chevy number 92, slid and hit the wall in the fourth turn. Then Darrell Waltrip in car number 48 hit him in the rear quarter panel and spun him like a top. This one brings out the first yellow flag of the day, and the wreckers go out to pick them up. are taken off the track and the debris cleaned up. The pace car leads them around to the green flag and the restart is on. Down the back shoot, it's a tight draft with Bobby Allison leading L.D. Ottinger and Lenny Pond. and Ottinger are rubbing the numbers off in a knocked out battle for the second spot. And both drivers give Bobby Allison no rest. Tiny 
Elon pitched his number 55 with a missing engine. His crew find two loose plug wires, pound them back on, load them with fuel, and send him out. Meanwhile, the Daytona Express streaks down the front straightaway with Bill Dennis running third and trying to close on Ottinger. In turn one, Bill Dennis pulls the cork on his big Mercury number 90 and slides underneath Ottinger to take over the second place slot. He's come from back in the eighth spot, and he's really pouring it on. There he goes, Bill Dennis in number 90 takes Allison and the front spot as all cars climb into turn three. On the trioval, it's Dennis with the lead, Allison second, Ottinger third. On the 46th lap, car number 41, driven by Gary Myers, loses it and spins out of the fourth turn. This brings out the second caution flag of the day, and all cars head for home. These crews may lack the experience of the Grand National boys, but watch this pit action. servicing for tires and fuel, all cars are back on the track. The pace car leads them onto the tri-oval, the green flies, and the restart is official. The leader now, though he's back in the pack, is Lenny Pond in the 0-1. Bill Dennis is second, with Wayne Andrews third in the double-O. cars entering turn two, Bill Dennis kicks the Mercury hard, passes Pond on the high side, and now the blue number 90 has the front spot. There goes another one. Tiny Lund in car number 55 tangles with Al Grinnan in the Mercury number 30. Lund spins down on the infield grass, and Grinnan stalls out in the second turn. Both drivers are okay, and the entire field made it through the turn without getting involved. This brings out the third yellow flag of the day, and the cleanup crews go to work before the restart. Lenny Pond is the leader in the 0-1 Chevy. Bill Dennis is running second as all cars come down off the front shoot to the green, and they're off. is closing in turn two. Then, as they enter the long back straight, he winds the Mercury up in the bottom groove and slips past Lenny Pond to regain his lead. Bill Dennis has won this race for the past two years, and he'd like to make this one number three. pit stop was running back in the rear of the field, but he's moved up to fifth place now in a flat-out bid for the lead. The back shoot is the action spot today. Lenny Pond lets it all hang out to pass Bill Dennis. Once again, the 0-1 leads the Permatex 300. Another one goes behind the wall. This time it's Buddy Howard. 
Meanwhile, Bobby Allison has a fire filled under the Coke machine and explodes past Wayne Andrews to take over the third spot. Allison is closing on the leaders at the rate of about a half second per lap. jump out of the deuce turn onto the back chute. Allison drops the hammer on Dennis to take over second. Now he's going for number one. There he goes, right down the front chute. Bobby Allison drops his Chevy in the low groove and screams past Lenny Pond to take the lead. Bill Dennis follows him through the hole to take over second. Hey, the fourth turn is hot. That three-car bummer involved Haskell Willingham in car 50, Affleck in number 59, and 97 Red Farmer, who spun across the infield grass. The drivers are all right. Yellow is out once again to give the wreckers a chance to tow the cars behind the wall. On the restart, Bobby Allison still has the front spot. Bill Dennis is second, Lenny Pond third, with Wayne Andrews running fourth. puts his number 12 Chevy through the traffic high and low, but Phil Dennis sticks with him every foot of the way. That was Ivan Baldwin in the 07. He came into the third turn a little too high and brushed the wall. He's all right, but it's a little hard on the paint job. During the last couple of laps, Bobby Allison has slackened off his pace. Now he wheels the Chevy into the pit. On the track, Bill Dennis in the Mercury number 90 takes over the lead. Bobby complained to his crew that he had no brakes. When they checked the car out, they found them completely gone. It took him about seven laps to put new binders under the Chevy, and he went back in the race. However, no longer a contender for a top spot. Bill Dennis has the big money spot now, and with a checkered flag in sight, really pours it off. There's the whites. One more lap, and the goose will drop the golden egg on Bill Dennis. Mercury streaks down the back chute with a half lap to go. <laughs> Onto the trioval and under the checkered flag, Bill Dennis wins his third consecutive Permatex 300. Lenny Pond took home the second place money. Wayne Andrews finished third. Fourth place went to Jack Ingram. And fifth to Johnny Allen. The race lasted one hour, 55 minutes. There were 21 lead changes. But the last one was the most important to Bill Dennis. Because it put him in victory lane.